What's up, everybody? Let's get right into it. I'm Adam. There's Sean. That's Steven over there. That means we're another episode of the NIL show. This is episode 10, which just feels right. It's just a good, nice round number. Perfect timing around the holidays. Lots of things going on. How are you, fellas? How was, how was your Thanksgiving, Steven? Thanksgiving was wonderful. I uh, smoked my first turkey. And, I uh, did not know where that sentence was going to go, and I'm glad it ended <laughs> with turkey. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, uh, we, we took a stab at Thanksgiving and we are all still living. So smoked we're all turkey. Good. So, so smoked instead of deep fried. And I've, I've been to your place. You've, you've got a wonderful setup. You got the Blackstone, you got the smoker easier or harder than preheating an oven and just letting it ride. I've never done that. Um, <laughs> I, I, so we'll I'm more of like a, I'm more of a, you know, the ovens for pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the black, st- or sorry, the Traeger is kind of idiot proof. Like everyone's like, oh my God, this is good. I'm like, you really don't yeah. do anything. You just like, we just, <laughs> Watson was with me the first time we were doing ribs and he's like, dude, just smother it with like stuff and just throw it in there. And I was like, huh, I'll do this every do weekend. Um, yeah. So it's a simple life. It's a simple life, but uh, I love it. I'm Sean, not, I'm not, was... a, not a culinary expert like yourself. Oh, I, far from an expert, but I do, I do dabble. In, in another life, I did work Dubs. as a in a in a professional kid. Uh, Sean, uh, how was your Thanksgiving, Sean? Thanksgiving was good. Went back to Maryland. I uh, got to see a lot of really good friends. It was some good time away, hanging out with them uh, during a very busy season. I introduced them to something called Malort. Are you guys familiar yeah. with Malort? Unfortunately, uh, do you mean <laughs> do you mean just straight raw gasoline in a in a bottle called Band- Band-Aids? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's. I think that's the one. Yeah, I I had never had it before. I moved to Chicago two years ago, um, and it has become quickly become the favorite alcohol to pour. Uh, when friends come and visit. And so my wife, who's just absolutely psychotic, decided to <laughs> that we should bring a bottle back to our friends and bring it to them in Maryland. Uh, so yeah, we 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 enjoyed Malort. It was uh, in, oh, ensuring funny. that your friends never come to Chicago. That's, yeah. uh, that, that's how you keep them out. <laughs> I love well, you it. can always get it. out of it too by saying, by saying, everybody always asks you, have you had a shot of Malort yet? And the best answer is to just say yes. That way they're like, okay, yeah, he's tried it before. <laughs> yeah. If you say no, it's guaranteed anything. you're having one. Right. Yeah. I, it's, a, it's a guaranteed way that I'm going to go home early. So I'm like, I'm just not, it's just <laughs> gross. Like a, it's a band aid. Uh, I guess maybe there's an, there's an acquired taste to it. I've met a couple of people that are like, oh, yeah, it actually grows on you. I'm like, no doesn't i mean that's what um, people say no. when stuff's disgusting right like yeah you know. i think i think it's brewed in the chicago river um so <laughs> yeah anyway oh, yeah, okay go ahead adam uh oh steven was just gonna completely blitz over my thanksgiving he's like look we got the important stuff out of the way M- malort and a smoked turkey and we're we're on to the next um top that it, we hosted so it was uh we hosted i had a sick sick toddler so I had uh, much less fun than than either of you guys, but uh, I was really grateful to have some family together. We had a really healthy Thanksgiving this year, just, you know, some family stuff going on. So s- stepped away from the butter, stepped away from the green bean casserole, um, but we did step up on the potatoes. We did a little truffle mash. That was that was my premier side this uh, uh, this year was the truffle mashed potatoes. You know the trick well to making think the trick to making Thanksgiving taste good is just adding a crap ton of butter. I think we went through a significant amount of it. Um, so, so, speaking of our arteries, um, Sean, how are you feeling? Uh, how is okay? You, you started with Malort, very Chicago of you. Yeah. Can you tell us uh, what you did on Monday. Um. Yeah, I. I, I ate a lot of hot dogs, Stephen. I, I ate a lot of hot dogs, uh, really for 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 athletes. Hot dogs for athletes. Hot dogs for campus hot dogs and for hometown heroes. Store. Hot dogs hot. for hometown heroes. Uh, label it any which way you want. No, I just uh, I don't know. I was I was inspired by um, I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna get into Cyber Monday uh, weekend later, but it was uh, it was just a, something that came to me as a way to potentially get some more attention for us uh at my arteries expense um and hopefully drive some sales so so we could uh help so, out to make money 
usually create the stupid ideas are like my camp right like crazy and stupid <laughs> is me and they usually get shot down pretty good like oh, have you rethought that let's sit on that one a little bit and i'm on my phone like i'm just like scrolling through and and sean's like all right like you're walking into work and you're like all right everybody like i'm gonna eat a hot dog for every fring- dm receipt i get and i'm going to the bears restaurant which is you know mr beef to pick him up and i'm like who this Sean, couldn't have been Sh- this couldn't have been Kelsey. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sean is Sean's fully leaning into his Chicago because we so <laughs> you know we, we both ride our our bikes to work in the morning. It was like 15 degrees on Monday. Yep. And we 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 pass each other in the intersection. So park our bikes, we're walking in the office and and out of nowhere he just goes, "I'm going to do something stupid today on behalf of our student athletes." And I was like, "Oh boy. <laughs> uh this could go a lot of ways." He's like, "I'm going to eat a hot dog." For every DM receipt we get. And I was like, ooh, you for are going to blow up like a balloon. Yeah, sorry. For every yeah. five receipts we get. Um, and, and yeah, so so that's how a legend was born in Campus Inc. and, and the NIL store. So there was a lot of you... workshopping to it. There was a lot of workshopping to it. The day before, I was actually texting Kelsey. And I was like, I, I need to do something dumb. I just don't know what it's going to be yet. And so, like, <laughs> my first thought was, okay, we have a ton of merch around the office. Like, for every receipt, I'm going to put on a new shirt. And like by the end of the day, I'm just like the Michelin man with like 100 shirts on. <laughs> Sounds sweaty. But that wasn't good enough. <laughs> and my other thought that I send to her, sent to her was I was just going to run the route of the Chicago, Chicago Marathon and put on a different shirt for every mile, <laughs> um, just, which would have been a lot healthier. <laughs> But also a lot of traffic. It's like there's, a lot there's of no tra- barricades up. <laughs> the roads aren't closed, uh, I, and it would have been. It was like 15 degrees. <laughs> These so, are great. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I had another then, buddy that wanted me to jump into the the Chicago, uh, into the uh, the lake, Lake Michigan, in like 100 shirts. I was like, dude, do you want me to die? Like, what? You're gonna try? You gotta live. Yeah, he, want, he wanted you to go <laughs> swim with the fishes. That's what he was like. I'm sick right. of this malort. You gave me a shot <laughs> well, of alert. You should put on a bunch of jerseys and jump in the lake. Yeah. We we yeah. did have a record setting day on Monday, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, which was really rad. But like, what's funny was like no one really knew about it, and like so like Colleen who like does a lot of content. I was like, do you have Colleen there? He's like, nope, I'm doing it alone. I'm doing it on live and like <laughs> slow day in the office. He's by himself and he's just talking to the camera. And like I look in the office and Kelsey's like, he's not doing so hot. <laughs> and you just have this look on your face like. I was like, how many? And you're like, <laughs> the hot dog haze. Uh, the hot dog how haze much was so- real. Sodium. Sodium. Uh, I, yeah. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. No, it was, next physical it, was, goes. it was about hot dog five or six where I was like, okay, this is bad. This is, this is not. And I probably, I am, I, I'm such a, I'm a weakling when it comes to eating a lot of food. Like I've probably eaten three hot dogs at the most in one day. Um, and the, I think it was the buns that got me. Those buns were – those things were thick. So I was trying to, like, rip off the bun a little bit. Uh, but Watson Watson put me into a blender. He's on maternity leave, so shout out Watson right now. But he put me in a blender when he texted me and said, I, I have more sodium in me than a salt shaker. When, he, when, I, when I was, like, picturing that in my head, I was like – uh, my I could feel my heart all of a sudden. I could feel my heart a little bit. I was like, "This is not good. I I, I got to get out of Sub, this." Did you, Sean? Sub-optimal. Did you did you dip it in the water? I I, I tried to dip. It was gross. Oh, it, yeah. that's gross. Yeah. So okay, Sean. Yeah. Before we 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 can actually talk about some stuff today, this is pretty funny. Uh, who was your favorite DM that messaged you? Any friends? Uh, friends of friends? Any big names come through the DMs? Um, so it was actually really cool. One of our student ambassadors, he, uh, miles at Northwestern, he was like, I just love this so much. I just, I bought a Northwestern football Jersey from you guys. I was like, Oh, that's awesome. I love that. That's really cool. Um, I was like, (laughs) I know, I know. Uh, and then we got, we got one from, uh, I'm not going to say his name, but, uh, uh, a good friend of ours in the space, um, who, uh, he was just, he was just like, I just want to eat. I want to see Sean eat. So uh, it, was, it was really cool that, that he jumped in on it, too. I love it, man. All, all for the sake of, of the student athletes. Uh, it was a big, it was a really big week. The, the whole activation you guys did, Life of a Marketer. I mean, Black Friday, Cyber Monday is kind of your Super Bowl. And uh, you guys knocked it out of the water. Yeah, it was a blast. Um, a little bit more robust than last year when it was, I think it was, it was basically just a, just a handful of us that were planning it this year. Uh, we had a little bit more of a robust team planning it. And so it was really cool. Like looking back 
year to year how far we've come. I think we had four four schools that we were working with at Black Friday last year. This year we had 37, so uh, significantly more. Um, we still, we look back and we're like, man, we got to start planning earlier than we did this year. Um, so we're already planning for next year, talking about what we can do. Uh, but it, I, I know, I, I, I think the, the one lever that we have um, is we have all these different social accounts and all these student ambassadors across the country who uh, are manning those social accounts and, and pushing our, our merch, but helping their athletes, helping support them. And so we really... Uh, we found ways to leverage them and, and, and get them involved and get them excited about it. And so it was just really cool. Uh, I, I think we just dominated the NIL space. Uh, if you were to go on Instagram or Twitter, we we're all over the place. So it was, and, it was a lot of fun. And I think what's funny is our students in the Slack channel, right? They're like Sean's army of, you know, soon to be Sean and Taylor's, right? They're learning from you. You guys ran, you know, marketing in higher ed. Um, and like, they get creative with each other. They compete with each other. They talk crap with each other. They make memes, gifs. And I just kind of like, I was looking at them and I'm just like, God, this is freaking hilarious. I laugh when I see uh, other companies spend a whole ton on, on like cool videos and ads and creative and this. And then you have a 20 year old that just can run laps around you uh, <laughs> with like really good content. And it was everywhere. Um, we set a record. So, uh, we made our athletes over a hundred thousand dollars this month. So with in under three weeks, basically, uh, the NIL store in November put a hundred thousand dollars into our athletes pockets. Um, not total sales, not over the year, literally just in the month of November. And, um, I, it's insane. I I'm bravo. I, I, is, I think the, the exciting thing is most of that was obviously around like, you know, the, the, the activations around the holidays and, and making sure we capitalize on, you know, really what you guys came up with this year was like, it's the gift that gives back. And the thing that was most exciting about the, that metric, the thing that's so exciting about these activations to me watching it is like, this is, this is the mission, right? It's the, the foundational mission is to create value for fans, put the best possible products we can in the market and create value for athletes. And and those things don't like neither of those supersede each other because the fans and athletes work together. And you know, you see a lot of these companies out here that are just selling stuff just to sell it. And it's like, man, like the whole point of name, image, and likeness is to create value for the student athletes. And not a lot of people can can put their money where their mouth is um as as much as as this team does. So it was it was pretty exciting to watch very can was... can we riff on that for a second of transparency in the industry um like we're very open about how much we make athletes you can pretty much find it out pretty quickly yes we do mm -hmm. pay athletes better than anyone else in the merch space and you know we're very proud of it um but on purpose like, we do that on purpose yeah yeah <laughs> like that that's how this works you pay really talented people really really well and they become partners of your business and so like i don't see this happening in the space we don't we see reports but like we might see like an on three article right but like why do you think it's so buried how much they make do you think it's because i don't know yeah wh why do you think it's not very public like why don't why don't other companies i don't know i i don't uh, you know i can't I've never talked to the other companies and dived into their books. So this is, this is just Adam's thoughts, a little caveat there. But <clears throat> my dad used to always say, if you don't have anything to hide, don't hide anything. And I think that's a really big piece of it, right? Like if somebody asks you a question, there's, there's something about saying, look, there's, you know, proprietary information. This is a business we're running. We have, you know, trade secrets and processes and things like that. We're not just going to blast all over, you know, uh, the, the, the airwaves for everybody. But when it comes down to creating value for athletes, if you don't have anything to hide, don't, don't hide anything. And, you know, we've talked with agents and we've talked with athletes and, you know, they've negotiated with us and they said, like, Oh, well, I'm going over to this place and I'm getting 80%. And it's like, well, 80% of rut. I don't know. They just said the royalty was going to be 80% on this. 
I'm like, okay. <laughs> Did you ask 80% of what though? Because you can say you're going to get 80% of the last dollar that I make in profit off of this uh, t-shirt. 80, 80% of 10%. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The profit is 10%. You're going to get 80% of that. It's like, I think man, they call that the, 8%. The, the, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the math ain't math in there. Just, I, I think the amount of like <laughs> mathematical gymnastics that happen around like royalty rates is, is insane. And this is Stephen, when you and I were talking about this, it's like, let's just make this really easy for everybody to understand and eliminate all the questions. And it turned into like, that's how you create value. Yeah, um, I was listening to our very Mark Cuban, a lot of news about him in the news lately uh, with the Mavs. And I was listening to the, I think his little smoke podcast with him and he said like, in 2023, the thing that's going to go br grow businesses is trust. Mm -hmm. That is going to be the key key. And he, he spent a lot of time on, you know, the NBA has to reinvent the way they connect to fans because most of their fans are are, are viewing their stuff on Instagram and Twitter. And so if they're not thinking through that, like, and not, you know, coming to them and building trust and, and those kind of things, they're going to lose them. Right. And so, uh, I think that is so ingrained in our heads because that's the only way we knew. I think Adam, that's the commitment you made when you came on board, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's where the bromance kind of started. Uh, <laughs> but you know, like I wish other companies in the space were more transparent about how much they paid athletes. And, mm -hmm. you know, I wish that, group rights agreements, licensing companies, like just we're open about it. Uh, Cause you hear about these media deals, right? You hear $300 million for this conference and they show how much the teams are making, you know, they show all these breakdowns, but like, why don't we just keep cutting the pie down and actually like break down the math, right? Like yeah. let the cream rise to the top a little bit. Um, and I, I hate to be on a, a pedestal here. I made a long ass LinkedIn post about this today. Uh, <laughs> But I can't wait to read it. If you're proud of it, if like share it. Yeah. If you're not well, proud of it, change it so that you can share it. I I, I love that actually. <laughs> and and I think I think like an important piece about that though is, you know, you you are saying Stephen, you don't want people to be transparent just for the sake of transparency, right? It's not like just so that I can know what you're doing and I can know your business. It really comes down to conversations we have with schools and with athletes all the time. They're like, I don't understand this. I don't understand what I'm signing up for. I don't understand how this works. I don't understand how this makes money. And there's, there's two ways that you can go about that then. You can either spend a ton of time giving athletes 10 to 15 years of experience in licensing and royalties and contracts and all this stuff that these people had who created this infrastructure. Or you can just make it clear <laughs> and easier to understand like th that's it and and that's really when you're dealing with college students and we talk about this all the time like the pros are different than college sports they just are you cannot do all these like legal policy mumbo jumbo gymnastics and expect 18 and 19 year old kids who have no representation to in good faith understand what they're getting themselves into Sean, when you guys were at Maryland, how much did they work with you guys on educating the athletes versus like, were the athletes, are they confused? Are we just making this up? Do you think this is just us on a high horse? You come from a lot of, you, you, you know, you're not from where I'm thinking about this. Yeah, I think that there is a lot of different educational opportunities and with athletes a lot of times you have to pick your spots they have so many things that are going on in their day-to-day -day, across class across um uh nil across their sport um and so um there's always that 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 selective group of athletes that's going to rise to the top and say hey I, i'm really interested i want to learn more about this um but it, 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 I, I imagine, and, and Tate on our team can speak to this too, that that education uh, and that athlete wanting to learn, I'm sure has only increased over the last two years is going to continue to increase. I think I told you guys way back, one of our, our, our top basketball players, he was a senior when NIL first dropped. I asked him, what do you think about all this stuff? And he said, 
I just wish I had taken business classes when I was a freshman, business marketing classes, because I would be so much smarter in this space. And that's what I would tell freshmen today is make sure that you're involved in business marketing classes and educating yourself that way outside of the resources that are being provided from the athletic department as well. Yeah. And that's where the way we look at it is like this. All the other tools for creators in the space, Etsy, Shopify, you know, mm-hmm. setting up these like, for, for, you know, if you're going to drive for Uber or DoorDash, it t- tells you how much you're going to make. It pays you quickly. And that should be the gold standard. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's what we're striving for is be transparent, pay them quick, pay them well. And if you do that, the square takes care of itself. Um, okay. So, uh, pretty awesome stuff that we did there. I'm, I'm super stoked and it was, it was fantastic. Uh, Adam, Iowa, big 10 <laughs> printing. Tell us about your Sunday to, uh, Tuesday. Yeah. I mean, talk about, uh, harebrained ideas. Um, <clears throat> really exciting. Obviously, you know, we had the opportunity to work with the big 10 and, um, create some really awesome nil merchandise that's going to be in venue for um for the big big 10 championship which is is pretty cool the big 10 is very progressive and like pretty they they take a a a great stance as thought leaders of saying look we want to create more opportunities for our student athletes not less when it comes to conference championships and activations and things like that so shout out to the big 10 office they've been wonderful to work with um but you know as you get into the postseason that is a challenge. It's quick turnarounds. Um, you know, lots of stuff is based off of wins and losses. And so, um, you know, Iowa clinches the, uh, the big 10 West. Um, then you're working with partners who are saying, yeah, let's bring in venue uh, merchandise. Um, and they only want, you know, stuff that they feel confident they can sell, which means it's our job to turn around and go to the athlete and say, we have a wonderful opportunity for you. Um, I don't want you to miss out on it, but we got to move like yesterday. So uh, not just me, shout out to Tate, um, shout out to Sean Childers. Our Sunday, Monday, Tuesday morning, um, you know, well into the evenings was spent educating athletes on the opportunity, signing them, tracking them down, leveraging any any contact. Uh, Eric Rubish, who lives in, in Cedar Rapids out there, was like, I will drive over to campus and, <laughs> and knock down these guys' doors. Just I don't want them to miss out on it for lack of awareness. So, Because really, Adam, for this to work, you needed the right athletes on the shirt. Yeah, and that's that's the thing, right? You know, when, when you're doing a team shirt, um, especially for football, you can't put 150 guys on there. Um, and, you know, some, sometimes... Iowa this year, they feel a little bit like the 2006 Bears, right? Or it's like <laughs> uh, very defensive heavy. Um, defense is winning a lot of games guys. for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and those often aren't the guys who are looking for, you know, big brand deals because people don't often search them out. They're usually looking for QB1, RB1. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for them. Um, and, and the really neat thing about this group of guys and, and this team was, you know, we got a couple of them on board. And I said, look, here's the deal. I need you to understand the urgency here. And they immediately were like, I got you. So they turned around and reached out to some of their teammates and stuff too. And I think this is just another great example of, you know, the conversation that says, oh, this is going to be challenging in the locker room. And this is going to be trouble in the locker room. When you, back to what we were talking about, when you have a great value opportunity and it's clear and it's understood, dude, all the guys are like, yeah, man, I want my teammates to be involved in this. Let me, let me reach out to them and make sure they saw your email. So it's, it was, it's really exciting. Um, I'm yeah. I can't wait for, for these guys to have their stuff uh, in venue. It's cool. I texted some friends that went to Iowa and they're like, dude, I'm buying one. This is dope. So, and, it's, and they're cool going to have an Iowa stuff in venue all around the fan fest. It'll move all into the in venue. There's some jerseys, there's some t-shirts and shout out to John Knutson, uh, who we've worked with closely, who's helped yep. us activate there um, on behalf of the big 10 and really like everyone coming to the table with their thinking caps on and creative caps. And, you know, we were, we obviously work with some schools and we don't work with other schools. We were positioned to obviously bring Ohio state merch in right away. We also reached out to their friends up North and said, Hey guys, here's an opportunity. They declined for another day. Uh, but like, it's all, all about collaborating, uh, mm-hmm. and just like thinking through the best way to do this. And this is just a continuation of what we did last spring so and Sean, and the other really cool system. thing there yeah the other really cool thing there is is you know the school's aware of this they're not facilitating anything but they know what we're doing and how quickly we can turn around and 
you know, they have, they're working with the children's hospital to bring in um, some honorary captains, some, some kids who are going to be honorary captains on the field. And so they reached out to us and they're like, Hey, no one else can do youth jerseys. Um, would you guys be willing to, to send some jerseys up for our honorary kids captains to wear uh, on field the day of the game? And we're like, Oh my gosh, like not only can we like, thank you for thinking of us. What a cool thing um, to, to take part in. So it's, it's fun, man. I just want to go on record here. I'm, I'm calling an Iowa upset this weekend. Calling an Iowa. Everybody upset. loves an underdog, baby. Everybody Shock loves an world. underdog. Their, their defense is phenomenal. They get to, get, get to the quarterback a couple times, keep it close, as they typically do. Good things yeah. um, Any, We'll see. Anything can happen. Hey, really quickly, uh, I know we got a couple, couple more things I want to riff on. I uh, was really impressed that we did the Indiana poster thing that does really, really well. Like, you know, mm-hmm. 20 some thousand posters. We did a, basically a rev share, like almost media deal. Uh, UConn reached out to us and we got to do that same thing with them. And so this is the same thing that happened with Maui, with the Maui jerseys. Other schools coming and saying, hey, can we do a Maui jersey? Can we do this? Can we do this? And we're starting to see these iterations. What I thought was most interesting was we got to come up with this poster. I don't know. I've been following this artist on Instagram. His name is Scotty. Uh, And he did a bunch of stuff early for us. Um, I talk to artists on Instagram all the time. Like I'm always DMing. If you're an artist, message me because I'll be in (laughs) if if your stuff is good. And he's young. He goes to like Southern Connecticut, but he's designed for a lot of cool NBA players and NFL players, like his dream. And his guys reshare his stuff, but he hasn't been put on the map yet. He's had a couple things go viral. And what I thought was super cool was Jason and Chili worked with, I think, Scotty. He got to design it. Now that poster is the Yukon men's and women's poster. You took a 20 year old who was so talented. And you just put him on the map like his portfolio. Now for the rest of his life, he'll say, I got to design the Yukon page backers. Like I got to design that. And I thought that was so cool that, um, you all did that. And I didn't even know you were working with him. I'm like, what the, where did this art come from? Like, who, who, what? I was this like, looks familiar. And I'm like, dude, you did this. He's like, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I'm like, crazy. Uh, but like, this is where, you know, the art and design, and those opportunities at Campus Inc. really come out. It's just as special for us to obviously make it for UConn and do that. But for that one individual, his world is, is changed uh, because of it. And we could farm out art overseas. We could do all that kind of stuff. That was a harder thing to do. But it's so cool. And when he's big time famous, you can go look at that mm-hmm. one. So I don't know who pulled that off. If that was you, who, who was behind Sean. all that? Yeah, it was, it was that was fun. It was months, months labor, labor of love, and and really shout out to Scotty, re- real unsung hero on that with with his cartoons there. Um, we set up front that when you work with a, a school, there's going to be a lot of back and forth, especially when they're showing the players, especially when you're talking about caricatures and cartoons. I don't know if anybody has ever like when you're on the boardwalk has gotten a caricature and loved the way they looked, the way they were depicted. Uh, so it, it's always a little bit difficult to getting that right. But uh, you have to shout out Kat Zapani at, at UConn, who was just tremendous going back and forth with us throughout that entire process. It was, it was a dream to work with her. Um, and it came out so nice. So yeah, we were really excited about that. And Scotty, just and- it's, it's and, not go ahead Adam. it's not just like any poster like the, the genius of this poster is it's like it's like a concert playbill like a tour poster right because coach <laughs> uh coach you know goes into a press conference and you know he's talking about all this stuff outside of the outside of the game what happens on the court and he's like look just shut up and win games and so turned into this like shut up and win games tour which then you know snowballed to to this great idea of this like tour poster so it's a it's it's cool it was fun to watch um and while that was happening y'all designed Paige becker's high school jersey that mm. we got to uh retail stores in is she from minnesota Where is she from? minnesota and actually being now sold in her hometown nuts so cool yeah yeah it's really good cool. news in high school. School. man um and yeah. you know this is you know like Paige is someone there's a lot of obstacles she's got big contracts she got a lot of stuff and we just you know the cable cowboys we find a way to figure out how to how to how to do it in the trenches and uh that is another cool activation and where did we start that from brandon pajemski st john's 
Yep, right? that's right. Yeah, she's got so, she's got deals with the biggest brands in the in in the country. Um, nobody else is doing her high school jersey. We'll do it for her. Heck yeah, uh, and that's I, cool. I, you know I think that that goes back to some of the stuff we've talked about is like creating real value, right? Like being authentic, not farming stuff out and just being like, oh, I don't know, we're gonna take your face, slap it on a t shirt. Like, who are you? How can we tell your story? Is it harder? One hundred percent. Is it more valuable? One hundred percent. Um, and, and yeah, man, it's, it's all labor of love. It's hard stuff. Speaking of hard stuff, it's a holiday season. Um, man, when you're, when you're in apparel and retail around the holiday season, it's tough, man. <laughs> Steven, this is, this is like, this is your, you've been doing this for a long time. You are a seasoned veteran in this. What, what's it like around this time of year to be in apparel, merchandise, consumer goods? Uh, well, you came down to Champagne yesterday, so you saw it buzzing. Uh, it was. This will be, I don't know, 7th, 8th, you know, December doing this. And the more we go D to C, the harder it gets. Uh, I've never felt better in my life about our manufacturing facility in my career than I have this week. And the mm. testament to it is... I am not there sleeping on the ground, <laughs> <laughs> figuring things out, shipping packages out. It is, we're running, you know, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., seven days a week. Uh, you know, uh, because we got a lot of new employees there, people have name tags, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's lunch coming in. Uh, the numbers are insane. Good energy, processes in place. You know, our, I, and I, the way I know how our, our fulfillment's doing is by looking at our support tickets. You know, mm -hmm. Campus Inc. does like we answer every email, returns, exchanges, all that stuff. That's important to us. And our support tickets are we don't have too many. And so if you ship out, call it, you know, 500 to 1000 orders a day, you're going to get 10 to 15. I want my return exchange, something like that. And that's my indicator to know it's working. Um, and so much so that I kind of we had to we ran out of space. So now my office is being occupied <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to find steven where, where he's sitting because he's he's uh he's bouncing around trying to find a seat down there now as we're, we're bursting at the seams but i don't i don't want to gloss over this so you, you mentioned wanting to you know you ship out a thousand orders you get 10 to 15 people that are like uh I, you know i want to change it why don't we do customized stuff why 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 are we accepting exchanges for customized stuff um I believe, I don't know where, I, I read a book, it's the old, the guy that founded Zappos, Tony Shea, he passed away, it's called uh, de um, Delivering Happiness or something like that, and Amazon bought Zappos, not because they were a shoe company, but because of how good their customer service was. Zappos mm -hmm. really coined free returns and exchanges, not Amazon, uh, mm -hmm. and that was a product of Tony Shea, of delighting your customers in your resolution like channel is the best way to market. So for us, our resolution department is our marketing department, mm. period. Give them a new shirt, send them another one, let them keep that one, right? Just delight them over and over again. The second you stick it to them, sorry, no extern, sorry. You've just gone. like, you've gone, right? Why do we order from Amazon? Because when they mess up, they fix it, right? Mm -hmm. And so for us, you know, we are imperfect. We will make mistakes. But if I spend a hundred bucks on something and I don't like it, I don't want to be stuck with it. I'm never going to yeah. buy one again. And so it just blows my mind that this isn't the norm again, but it's very, very, very important to me. And that's why we own our own facility, right? Um, that's why it's so important. And, you know, uh, a lot of times it's not our fault, but we don't care. Just delight them, <laughs> just delight them, just delight them. And we get, I get forwarded a bunch of stuff from Lauren. Uh, on the service desk and people are like thank you so much wow you actually answered really quickly have a great mm -hmm. holiday season so mm -hmm. i don't know i get i get on a high horse here about this so no it's 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 important i think you know that's one thing that i've always loved about campus inc and just being a personal friend of yours steven like your your commitment to like especially again when you're dealing with fans and you're dealing with kids that like they're buying something of their hero you know and they open it up on christmas or whatever and maybe it's wrong or something like that and they're just like oh bummer i guess i just don't get it <laughs> um it's it's super important because you're also representing the the brand of the uh of the athlete as well so yeah we ha sometimes we have a, a 
the expectation that we're we're Amazon. Um, we're not Amazon. <laughs> Sometimes stuff takes a little bit longer. Um, I, I'm not Jeff Bezos. I have a little bit more hair than him. Steven has a lot more hair than Jeff Bezos. But uh, yeah, we're 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 still busting our butt um, to make sure that you know we get stuff out on time. We do right by the customers, and and yeah, it's really important because it's, it's that the, brand piece. The last thing I want is a parent of a athlete buying a shirt and saying I got the wrong size or something wrong and us like sticking it to them like how yeah. awful would that sorry. be and sorry <laughs> so yeah it's it's really and and who does that go back to the NIL director it just goes it just turns yep. into someone else's problem and, and we don't we just lead bullets baby only way you're gonna That's handle right. it so uh I love it we're probably out of time for today we're going to Vegas in about a month and change. There's a lot of mm -hmm. cool stuff. So we might need to do a second one of this because we're going to be unveiling what we call the Blanks program. We're just going to keep it at that. Oh, I'm baby. good for today. We'll, we'll give it a cliffhanger. It's, it's the holiday season. We're, we're going to be at uh, the Sports Business Journal Intercollegiate Athletics Forum next week. Stephen and I are. Um, if you're there, come say hi. We'll give you oh, we're going to Vegas how it twice was. in the next month. I'm going. We're going on Lucky us. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's it's good. It's a fun time. We'll be sure to hop back on. Keep you guys updated. As always, you can reach out to us. But uh, I'm Adam. There's Stephen. That's Sean. This is another episode of the NIL Show. We will catch you guys next time.